As an avid sewer, I routinely clean out my bobbin case area. It's something that I can do to maintain my machine uh, along with taking it to an authorized baby lock retailer for maintenance at least once a year. The first thing that you're going to do is gather a few supplies. And those supplies include this little T screw. And you'll find that in the accessory bag that sits in your drawer on your accessory tray. The next thing you're going to want to pull out is the lint brush. And on one end you have the bristles, on the other end it is the seam ripper. One of the other things that I use is I actually use a makeup brush and you can see that the uh, bristles or the head on this makeup brush is full and they're soft. And this also helps collect the lint in addition to the lint brush that came with your machine. And then I have a pair of thread snips. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to clip that needle thread and pull that needle thread out and away. Next, I'm going to remove the presser foot. And the reason that I'm doing this is when I take off the needle plate, I want this area free and clear so that I don't accidentally hit my finger on that needle. And what I'm going to do is loosen this screw that's holding my needle in place. And now I've taken my needle out. Next, I need to remove the bobbin cover plates. And if you look in the left hand corner, you'll see the word push. Then you'll, on the right hand side, you'll see a little black tab. You're going to slide your finger across that. What that does is that lifts the bobbin cover plate, but it's hard to grasp. So if you press push, what that does is that pushes that bobbin cover plate up so you can easily grab it. Next, I'm going to take my bobbin out and place it to the side. Now, there are two screws located on the needle plate. I'm going to loosen each of these screws. And then I just take my finger and just continue to loosen that screw to remove it. And I would suggest that at home you have a magnetic bowl that you can put those screws in so that you don't lose them. And we'll loosen this screw on this side and we'll take that one out and we'll set it off to the side. Then I can take my needle plate off and what I will oftentimes do is you can see that this has gathered a lot of lint underneath the needle plate itself so I will come in with my brush and I'm just going to grab all that lint and get that out of the way so that it doesn't end up in my project. I will tell you a real quick tip if you notice when you're sewing that you've got lint coming on to the surface of whatever you happen to be sewing it's time to clean out your bobbin case now the next thing that i'm going to do is actually take out the bobbin case itself and again this is where i'm going to use a lint brush just to get rid of all of that lint that looks pretty clean, so I'm going to set that to the side. And now we'll look at my bobbin case area. And you can see that I was very busy working on a project and all of this lint that has built up in there. And that really will affect a number of things. It will affect your tension probably the most. The other thing, as I mentioned, it comes up on your project and it can get caught in your stitching. So we'll get all of this lint out of here. Nice and clean and neat. You can certainly use canned air. Uh, it works very well. I actually prefer to use the lint brush because I'm actually get, getting the lint out of the machine. I'm not blowing it into the machine. The other thing is, is I think we sometimes often tend to hang on to that can and press down for a period of time the can gets cold and you don't want to be using that canned air when that can is cold. So now that looks pretty clean to me right there. Now what I'm going to do is just bring in um, a little bit of oil and in the instruction manual it will tell you to do this. Uh, this is actually um, a specific brand and it's a clear oil and you really need to make sure that you're using that clear oil and I'm just going to take this and dab just a little bit of oil right there not a lot doesn't need a whole lot and I'm ready to put my bobbin case back into place now when you do this you will notice that on your bobbin case you have this little black notch if I then look at the hook system that sits in the machine, you'll notice that there is 
a ledge that sits here. It's almost like a little spring that moves back and forth. I need to align those two points, meaning that this notch needs to sit to the left of that guide so that when the bobbin case is moving back and forth as you're stitching, that that stops the bobbin case from spinning around. So once that's in place, I'm ready to put my needle plate back in place and I'm gonna place that on top. The other thing that I need to make sure is that this guide is sitting on top of my bobbin case. That will keep that bobbin case from, in a sense, popping up. I'm ready to place my screws in place. And I always place one screw in place and just get it seated and started. Bring the other screw back in place, get that seated and started. And then I come back in after I've got them flat against the needle plate, I come back in with my screwdriver and I tighten them. You always wanna make sure that you tighten them with this tool or any other type of screwdriver that will fit into that head. That's really important because it's real easy to put dings in those screws and you don't want that because that will catch on your fabric. But again, you want to tighten them so that that needle plate doesn't move. We don't want that needle plate to move while you're sewing. Now we're ready to place the thread back into the bobbin case. I'm going to take that through the first tension, come up and around, clip that thread, placing my bobbin cover back in place. I'm going to align this guide right in place there and pop down and that's in place. Next is my needle. I'm going to slide my needle up into place, and you'll notice that when you slide your needle up into place, there's a little stopper that sits up there. Once that, the top of the needle hits that stopper, finger tighten that, and then I come in and just ever so slightly just tighten it a little bit. You don't want to over tighten that screw with your needle in place. My last thing to do is place the presser foot in place, and I'm going to align the pin with the claw on the ankle lower my presser foot and it will snap in place. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do too is you can see there's a little bit of lint in here and I'm gonna use my brush to get rid of all of that lint. Now we're ready to thread the needle. I'm gonna grab that needle thread and I have one more guide right above the needle to uh, pass the thread through. So that thread is gonna come on the right and go to the left, and then I just slide it down into place. I think that that's the easiest way to thread that guide. I'm going to lower the presser foot so it puts a little bit of tension on my thread as I'm threading. Then what I'm going to do is on the front of your machine, you have a needle up, needle down button. And the reason that I do this every time I thread, and I mean every time I thread, is I don't always remember where my hand has gone, which means going over to the hand wheel and turning it. And what that does is it places the needle out of position with the needle threader. The needle threader is going to come down and you're going to see there's a little hook there. Your thread passes underneath it just like that. And then what you do when you push all the way down, there's a little, what I call a fork. There's two sides and a center actually line up with the eye of the needle and I release. And now I've got a little thread tail that I'm going to pull through. So once that's done, I'm ready to go.